Okay, so what we have here is the state diagram. Xec is the execute button, and F slash P naught is the function and push stack switch. The state diagram starts at idle. It then waits for the execute to go to the next stage, which is select. If the switch is at zero, the select goes to the push stage, and if the switch is at one, it goes to the function stage. The function is performed, and then it goes back to idle. This here is the control unit circuit diagram. It's the implementation of our state diagram. On the right is our three-bit decoder, where it shows the states idle, select, push, and function. And in, on our left is the four-bit counter. The circuit will load from inputs A to D, only if one of these states are active, idle, select, push two, and function four. Idle state will load zero in the counter until rising edge is detected on the execute switch. Once the rising edge is detected, one is loaded into the counter. Output is one. Select state loads two if the function slash push is zero. Select state loads four if the function slash push is one. Push two and function four load zero and then it causes the state diagram to return to idle state. All the other states increment. The three bit decoder contains states zero to seven, but the four bit container counter contains states zero to 15. Eight to 15 are invalid states, so if they're loaded, the decoder is disabled. Here we have the body of our design. Quick note, all VCC inputs are connected to a five volt power supply and all ground inputs are connected to low. We'll start off with our four bit up down counter. Our counter gets two control signal inputs from our control unit that go to the up-down input and the P-enable, respectively. Pins for A, B, C, D, and T-enable are connected to low. The load pin is connected to our 5-volt power supply. The ripple carry output is left blank. And lastly, our counter outputs are connected to the address inputs of our 16x4 RAM. Now, the write enable in our 16x4 RAM gets one control signal from the control unit, while the memory enable is connected to low. Our RAM gets its data inputs from our quad 2 input multiplexer outputs. Quick note, the memory outputs are open collector. Therefore, in our build of the circuit, we used pull-up resistors. Lastly, the outputs of our RAM are now connected to the parallel data inputs of register 1. The outputs are also directly connected to the A operand inputs of our ALU. From our 4-bit shift register 1, we take the parallel outputs and connect them to our B operand inputs of our ALU. There is one control signal coming from our control unit that is connected to the mode control input of our register. We keep both the serial clock input and serial data input connected to low and the parallel clock input connected to our clock cycle. Now, at our AOU, our four function select inputs are connected to four switches. These switches are for selecting the function to be performed. The carry in input is also connected to its own switch. The pin for mode control input is connected to low. Pins for comparator output carry generate output, carry propagate output, and carry output are left blank. Finally, our LU function outputs are connected to the parallel data inputs of register 2, as well as directly connected to four LEDs. For register 2, pins for serial data input, serial clock input, and parallel clock input are connected the same as in register 1. The parallel outputs for register 2 then are connected to the data inputs from source 1 on our quad 2 input multiplexer. In our quad 2 input multiplexer, there is a control signal coming from the control unit that is connected to its common select input pin. The enable input on our MUX is connected to low. And lastly, we also have four switches connected to the data inputs from source 0 pin on our multiplexer. These switches are for selecting data. This sums up the body design for a 4-bit RPN calculator circuit. The control unit is responsible for generating six control signals. SPUD, or stack pointer up down, controls the up slash down pin of the 4-bit counter used as the stack pointer and changes whether the stack pointer increments or decrements. Not CE, or count enable, controls when the stack pointer increments or decrements. Not MWE, or memory write enable, tells the RAM when to write the data to the top of the stack. MUX, or multiplexer output switch, controls whether the data input to the stack is a number from the user or the result of a calculation. R1E and R2E, the register enables, control when the registers latch data at their inputs. Register 1 holds an operand for calculation, and register 2 holds the results of a calculation. Count enable and memory write enable are inverted signals because the enable pins on the chips we used are inverted inputs. 
On the left of this slide is a table showing the values of each control signal in each state. On the right is the implementation that produced these control signals. Note that the decoder we used in the control unit to output the current state has active low outputs. So the implementation is designed such that only one state is a low at any given time, and the others are all high. Push two. Then do one plus two. Now the result is three, but the register one contains two. And so right now it's doing the top of the stack, which is three plus the register one is two, which is five. If I change the switch to only show the memory input. What's in memory? It shows three correctly.